All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews. And as promised, here we are talking about one of my favorite movies. This is definitely going in the essential film series that I do occasionally. Um, but this is a special day uh, because tomorrow is 420 and uh, I wanna do two movies, uh, one here and one tomorrow, uh, to celebrate, uh, to watch something uh, in the vein of that. Uh, <laughs> and the two movies I chose are first, Better Off Dead, and then tomorrow we'll get to One Crazy Summer. Both uh, movies from, this is from 1984, One Crazy Summer is from 1987, but we'll talk about One Crazy Summer tomorrow. But both are directed by a guy named Savage Steve Holland. And um, those two movies, uh, alongside a, like a lot of other movies, but... <laughs> This movie and One Crazy Summer hold a very special place in my heart um, because they're basically kind of the two comedies that just clicked with me from back then. And I'm talking like 84, I was nine. I've been watching this movie since I was nine and, even, and I've not stopped. I have not seen it in a while. But um, I was wondering if it was gonna how it was how I was gonna feel after I watched it, um, but it, I love it. I love this movie. I this is one of those movies that I could seriously say, seriously, um, would be in like the t the running for like if I could only watch like one movie uh, before I died, this might be one of them. And I know that that's like crazy. People are like, how could you say this movie? But when I get done watching this movie. I just feel good. I mean, really good. And uh, I don't, that just doesn't, I don't have that many movies where I just, every time it just crushes me how much I love it. Um, and so here I am sharing it today with you. Better Off Dead from 1984 starring John Cusack, David Ogden Steers, um, Diane Franklin, Dan Schneider, uh, Curtis Armstrong is in this motherfucker. Um, <laughs> Vincent Chiavelli. And, uh, oh, and Stephen Williams is in this. And uh, Elizabeth Daly. Let's talk about Elizabeth Daly really quick, though. Uh, everybody knows Elizabeth Daly, like, in the, like, millennial-type generation uh, from the 90s. If you were a little kid in the 90s, you knew Elizabeth Daly, who was the voice of Tommy Pickles on Rugrats, and she was one of the Powerpuff Girls. But before that, she was Dottie in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. And I remember, um, it was way after this came out, and I re-watched it after seeing Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and remembered, oh my god, Elizabeth Daly is also in Better Off Dead. She plays the singer in the band that plays at prom. And I'm pretty damn sure that she actually sings the song that's called Better Off Dead in the movie. And holy cannoli did Elizabeth Daly have it going on back then. Oh my gosh, because I remember her as Dottie. And she's, Dottie's just cute. She's this great girl next door. But in this man, when she's wearing this like little tiny mini skirt dress singing Better Off Dead, oh my gosh, it's hot. I'm sorry. If you see it, I know. And I hope you guys do watch it. Like I said, you can find it on YouTube. But to talk about the plot of this movie. So it is like the airplane of like 80s, you know, teen comedies or teen dramas, I should say. But this, you know, the, the, the person has somebody that they're in love with. They get broken up with. Uh, they have to struggle. They meet somebody else that's like a friend to them. They don't see the love interest yet until the end of the movie. And usually there's some sort of uh, hurdle to, you know, to jump over, uh, in those movies. And in this case, like a lot of eighties movies, this, uh, has like a sport, uh, and this it's skiing. Uh, I, I will be, n I, this movie has to, uh, have been one of the influences for the South Park episode about the pizza French fries when they go skiing and they meet the guys that call him, uh, what, Stan Dersh or Darsh. <laughs> like that has that plot, that plot of that of that episode is part of the plot from this movie but a lot of movies kind of have the this plot and it this is a silly movie it is completely a, like a live action cartoon this this universe that this movie takes place in has no rules same as one crazy summer and that's what i love like when you can just do whatever you want 
and just say to damned with movie roles and everything else and then be funny and just good. I just, I, this is one of those movies where, I mean, I heard John Cusack does not like this movie or didn't like this movie when it came out, that he left 20 minutes in saying that it was terrible. And I don't know if he still feels that way, but that's just what I read at the, uh, from the time that it came out. But, ah, oh man, I just, I love this movie so much. So John Cusack plays Lane. Uh, he's got this girl that he's uh, obsessed with. Uh, her name is Beth. And Beth is played by, um, damn it, she's from, I had it too, Amanda Weiss. I want to say W-Y-S-S. She's from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the very original with Johnny Depp and Freddie and uh, uh, the very first one. And she's like his first victim. She's like the blonde friend uh, in that movie. And uh, there's even a scene where somebody next to her is wearing like the, the Freddie uh, sweater. But John Cusack Lane is going out with her. And uh, she breaks up with him and he's devastated and it's how he feels like he can't go on. He occasionally is contemplating and, and trying to, tries to, you know, he, he's, he keeps trying to kind of commit suicide, <laughs> which makes this, like, kind of have this, like, edge to it, this kind of dark humor, this black humor in this, like, very silly airplane-esque, naked gun-esque kind of style of humor. Um, and it doesn't, you know, it it's... I don't feel like it's making fun of suicide or making light of it. Um, in fact, there's a scene where he accidentally, like he's going to hang himself and he try, decides not to, but then his mom comes in and pushes the door and he's like, he's, she knocks him over. So he's actually hanging himself because she's like pushed him off the steps. Um, <laughs> but in the movie, you know, it, he he's a... Uh, a skier too. He has all these things. Like they kind of give him like a hodgepodge of eighties uh, cliche. Of what this guy does. He plays the saxophone. He's got a car that he needs to fix. Um, so he's got just all the, all these different things. He's kind of like all the guys from the breakfast club combined. <laughs> um, <laughs> never really thought of it like that until just now. Um, but he meets this girl. She's a French foreign exchange student. She supposedly doesn't speak English and she brings him around. She starts to wake him up and get back into the world, giving him confidence. And then they fall in love. And the movie just has this nice ending where he, he beats the villain, uh, you know, the, the, the other love interest, the, the guy who steals his original girlfriend away. And, you know, he becomes the hero of the day and by skiing the mountain faster than the other guy. And he just, he leaves, he fights for the girl for a second and he leaves with the girl and they go to Dodger Stadium. And it's just this great movie. Now, in the middle of this movie, through the movie, it is just nonstop craziness. Nonstop craziness. Uh, it has a great soundtrack. It has like everybody from back in those days. Um, the score is a little, is, is your typical Casio, you know, almost synth at times, uh, soundtrack score, but the rest of the music is, you know, a lot of like Duran Duran and stuff. And then there's like Howard Jones's like, you know, uh... <laughs> it's just, it's just fantastic. And being a kid from the eighties, you just, I have to appreciate it. And I, I can definitely see why, you know, other people in this world would not appreciate this movie as much as I do, because it's just one of those movies that flies under the radar. But it's also these, one of these movies that if you hear certain phrases ever, when people are, you can tell they're making a reference. Uh, there's, this movie is so referenceable. It gave us the, and I'm telling you right now, if somebody says, I want my $2, in a reference type of way, this is that movie that it came from. Uh, if they say that it came from another movie, that movie stole it from this movie. Uh, the, the, I want my two dollars. Is the uh, they have a paper boy that they won't pay, and he keeps coming back for his money with increasing uh, intensity. <laughs> you could say. First, he just get, comes to the front door and he has the he pulls out this thing that's like you think it's going to be a switchblade. 
and it turns out to be a comb. And this was what started my youthful obsession with switchblade combs. I remember we went to Chinatown not uh, back in the late 80s, and, we, and I saw the, uh, a switchblade comb in one of the little bodegas, and I had to have it. And I would always just click it and go like this to my hair, just like the kid does in this movie. Uh, but he also comes after uh, John Cusack uh, uh, after the prom. He attacks him and ends up going through a car wash. <laughs> he even chases him literally on a bike with skis going down a mountain. And then at the very end of the movie, and the mountain scene, <laughs> when he's chasing them down the mountain on his bike, and John Cusack's character is skiing down the hill the mountain on one ski, I, the stunt work in this is really, really good. It should not be forgotten that the skiing stunt work and stuff in this movie is fucking excellent. Um, but the mountain skiing thing with the newspaper kid is one of the funniest has one of the funniest end results I just have ever seen. I think, uh, I can't say because, I mean, like, I, you have to see it. You know, um, I'm not going to spoil everything from this movie. You just have to see it to believe it. But then the, the, the newspaper boy shows up at the very end of the movie, like literally the end of the movie, as they're fading away, he is chasing our heroes at Dodger Stadium. <laughs> Uh, this movie also has one of my favorite lines. Uh, it has so many good lines. Like, uh, gee, I'm really sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. <laughs> um, or, uh, oh God, uh, Curtis Armstrong. Uh, oh no, like the villain of this movie comes up to Curtis Armstrong and John Cusack at the prom and they're sitting there all by themselves. And he comes up to just mock them and you know, he's like, oh, like talking to Kurt, uh, John Cusack about Curtis Armstrong, making fun that it's a, he's his date. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, you guys look really like a really cute couple. <laughs> I better shave her close before kissing her goodnight. And this this leads to Curtis Armstrong laughing hysterically at his own, at this guy putting him down. He he thought the joke was funny and he didn't care if it was against him or not. And it just keeps coming back later on throughout the prom scene of Curtis Armstrong showing up still laughing at this put down. Uh, <laughs> the villain in this is great, man. He gets so many crazy lines. Buenos dias, Roy Stalin. He is such a perfect 80s dickhead. Oh my God. Um, this movie also has David Ogden Steers, who died last year. Uh, he's from MASH. Um, uh, he plays Lane's dad, who he is fantastic in this movie. He is this long-suffering father who's trying to reach to like reach his son. Uh, his wife uh, can't cook. She boils bacon. <laughs> she thinks French food is like French fries. <laughs> And you've got a son named Badger who does not have a single line in this movie, but is like an enigma wrapped in a riddle surrounded by a conundrum. I don't know. I, I can't think of any other things. But this kid is something else. And throughout the movie, you just see more and more of like this kid's like some sort of super genius uh, somehow in this family. Um, but at first, his just everything about him is just bizarre. <laughs> he 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 creates a, I don't even want to spoil any of this in case you haven't seen it, but let's just say it ends with him, uh, the journey. I'm going to spoil the end of it, but the journey is how you get there. But it ends with his character, uh, his parents are running out of the house and they realize that Badger has built a spaceship in the garage and takes off in it through the roof of their house and flies away into space. That happens in this movie. It's literally one of the last things that happens. And it's fantastic. <laughs> um, this movie also has a really good performance um, from uh, Dan Schneider, who was from a little show in the 80s called Head of the Fucking Class with Howard Hessman. It also had Robin Gibbons, Mike Tyson's old punching bag. And uh, I don't mean that, you know, I, sorry. That, <laughs> I made it sound like I was making light of Mike Tyson beating up women, and I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. Um, but she was. Um, and uh, he, he's not been in much as far as what I've seen. But in this, he gets to play the really creepy kid that's uh, 
uh, got a crush on the French girl in this movie who I've had a major crush on after this movie. She was also in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure as one of the girlfriends uh, from the medieval times that they get. Um, Laura Waterbury is Ricky's mother. Oh my God. <laughs> She's so great. This lady is such a... Let's just say... The, the, she's the reason that they have to say, gee, I'm really sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Um, and she, for part of the movie, she is walking around with like a face cast over her face it, and trying to, still talking through it. My God. Great. Uh, Curtis Armstrong also. This is one of my favorite, this might be my favorite Curtis Armstrong movie because he's just this guy obsessed with drugs. He can't get real drugs in the town they live in. And so he snorts snow, he snorts jello, he's asking where can he get nasal spray. Um, <laughs> he wants, he, he's asking Lane if he knows what the street value of the mountain that they're standing on is. Because <laughs> it's pure snow, man! <laughs> oh God! There's also these two guys from, uh, that like are Asian students who are constantly driving, trying to drag race with John Cusack. Um, and one can't speak English, and the other one can only speak in Howard Cosell. <laughs> and they're always, throughout this movie, trying to drag race uh, Lane to varying degrees of hilarity. Um, he also gets a job uh, where you get to see this guy uh, who's from the original Porky's movies uh, from the 80s. Um, dang it, where is he? Uh... I can't remember his name now, but he is, um, damn it, we're going to find it. Chuck Mitchell he plays Rocco. He's really funny in this movie. And Stephen Williams gets one of the best lines of the movie, too. When during, like, a uh, accidental uh, almost death, John Cusack is, finds himself in the back of a garbage truck. <laughs> He drives by these two uh, black guys uh, fixing, like, over by the power lines, and the, he waves from the garbage can, and they wave back. And, the, and Stephen Williams gets to say the line, man, that's a damn shame, people throwing away a perfectly good white boy like that. <laughs> <laughs> and thus began my obsession with Stephen Williams from 21 Jump Street and X-Files. Um... <laughs> But just, there's just so much to love in this movie. When he goes and takes, uh, when he tries getting a, a job for this Rocco guy at his uh, bar burger joint, uh, he has a, a daydream where the hamburgers come to life to Everybody Wants Some from Van Halen. It's all done in claymation. There's a lot of animation in this. Um, I'm just telling you, this movie's fucking phenomenal. I don't know how many more times I can say it. The French girl is really fun in this. The whole thing is just, it's got such a great, like, even though some of this stuff is kind of dark humor, none of it's cynical, really. It's all just, it takes all the things that you've seen in other movies and just makes it fun. And it's an hour, a quick hour and a half movie. And even as Vincent Chiavelli, oh God, okay, so Vincent Chiavelli in this movie, uh, he, rest in peace, um, He's also like from X-Files and everything. He's that kind of, you'll know what I'm talking about if you see this movie. He plays a teacher, an algebra teacher, I believe, or trigonometry or something. Maybe it's geometry, whatever. He has the most dedicated students in the entire history of classes in movies. These people hang on every word. They're so into this class and this teacher has them so mesmerized, I have never seen anything equal to it. Dead Poet Society comes close. So these kids, this classroom, you have never seen a class like this. It is amazing. And I just love it because it takes that whole everybody hates school and let's say, what if everybody loved school as much as these kids do? It's unbelievable. Um, and let's see, what else can we talk about from this movie? What else is in here? Uh, Rich Little does some voices in this. And, th and there's just some trivia for it. Like, yeah, like I said, John Cusack didn't like this movie, uh, when it came out. Um, and 
Diane Franklin, uh, who plays the French girl. Um, I should know her damn name. I should be able to say it. Monique, Ju Monique Junet. Um, <laughs> she went to Brooklyn uh, Dodgers Stadium, or the LA Dodgers, I guess, now, um, to see if they wanted her to, like, you know, throw the first pitch or whatever. And uh, they asked her to sing the national anthem. And she only went there because she thought people would, that had seen this movie wouldn't understand why she was there. Um, but it didn't work out that way. And that was really kind of stupid. That was a stupid thing for me to say. I thought that was going to be an interesting trivia question. <laughs> but a trivia, and it really wasn't. <laughs> but uh, Savage Steve Holland, who, who directed this and One Crazy Summer, which is this equally and in, in its own way even more insane... Um, I have not seen anything really from him. I know he's done a lot, but it's never been like whatever I've looked at. I, I was looking up for him under his IMDb page and I'm like, I've never heard of any of this stuff. Uh, and I might have to start checking it out, but a lot of it looks like, mm, I don't know. He had his heyday, a bit of his heyday. And you know, these were never like, I don't believe these, either of these movies were big hits. And it's probably why I haven't heard of anything that he's done. Which is damn shame because these two movies are just ridiculous in the best possible way. And I feel like I'm going to forget things after I'm done. But I'm trying to rattle through all the different scenes, all the different ways this is funny. Uh, f no? Okay. <laughs> anyway, if you want to see David Ogden Steers dressed as an aardvark, this is a movie for you. Um, this movie also has the... Uh, in the movie Basketball, when uh, Troy Parker, Trey Parker is uh, listening to the radio and all the songs are all about him, like literally all about him, this movie did that first by every radio station playing a Breaking Up With Your Boyfriend song. Uh, this movie also did the, uh, before Ferris Bueller did it, at the end of the movie's credits, it says, the movie's over, you can go home now. I, I, I just, I feel like this movie is still underappreciated and way ahead of its time. And if you have seen it and you like it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I can't believe I don't own this as a t-shirt. I should be ashamed of myself. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I really, really, really enjoyed watching this movie. I hope you watch this on my recommendation. I hope if you've already seen it, you enjoyed this review. And that's where we get to. If you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Otherwise, this is Robert Smirking Gun Review saying we will be back tomorrow with One Crazy Summer, the second in the, the series for 420 that we'll be doing. And then my vacation will have started. So One Crazy Summer will be the first video of my vacation. And if you know anything about what happened on the last vacation, it means we're getting a lot of content. Um, so expect a lot of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> and we got to finish up our MCU in review. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of stuff happening. And I got to do Black Panther. And that'll be coming Sunday. And then we've got Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, a relook at Captain Marvel, and Avengers Endgame on Friday. So uh, stay tuned for more stuff from the channel constantly. Other, and we've got the live streams on Monday starting from my PS4 Pro. We're going to try it until we can get up to a thousand subscribers or I get enough money together to get me a laptop. Um, so Mondays around uh, like 5 36 o'clock will be the live streams from my PS4 Pro where we'll be doing uh, Q and A's and whatever talking about topics while I casually play something on my PS4. So this is Robert Smirking on review saying hope to see you on all of these reviews. I hope you guys comment. I hope you like and subscribe and share and hit the bell for all notifications. All that rigmarole. Otherwise, have a great night and we will see you next time. Bye.